Good morning. I'm doing my makeup. <laughs> so many little things arose today. Um, but let's start with a deep breath. I'm uh, buried amongst all my accoutrement here. <laughs> my potions and lotions and beloved brushes is my warm fluid. Mm. This morning with lots of lipstick on it. <laughs> so relax. <sighs> Sit up straight. Shake it off. Woo. It. What is it? And exhale. Take a deep breath in. Four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. Ah, hey. Ooh, zing. <laughs> I, I'm always excited when I've got something exciting to do, and today... I'm going to look at geodes. Yay. So what a rose. I just got a message from one woman named Pearl. And Pearl, I think she was spot on. She says she met me a, a while back at an art show in New York. And, um, and, um, Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye, honey. I love you. Have a good day. And she remembered me. And then I, I don't know how she reconnected with me, but she told me she'd been watching my morning breathing work and the meditations and rantings. And she's an artist. And she says that she recognizes that what I do, my morning meditations and and everything that she sees <laughs> and hears and experiences from me is is art, and um, and she's so spot on because I am an artist. I always have been. Um, I became a doctor later in life so I could have a real job, um, but I have always been an artist since I was a little girl. I sang in church when I was little, like at age five. They would put me at the front of the church and I had this really deep voice even when I was a teeny weeny and I was really really small so I guess everyone thought that was really cute and funny to have this really little girl who um who could sing like Louis Armstrong um let's see what's that song he sings somewhere over the rainbow and little bitty my legs were like sticks like that little two little sticks and um so I've been in this performing art because performance is a, is a form of art and um then I went to uh, theater and dance at University of Southern Mississippi where I studied that and I uh, was in lots of shows and um, and then um I had a chance to come out here and be in a rock band and I did that mostly at the Whiskey A Go Go and the Roxy in Los Angeles with my rock band. Um, and that was really creative because I got in a rock band, you get to do whatever you want up on stage. And we did. We were sort of like a hard rock punk band, so we could be wild and break guitars and drums and stuff. And, and my band did. And so, um, so then I decided I needed a real job and I needed to take care of my daughter. And I didn't want to depend on someone else, or in particularly, in particular, a man. I remember saying that. I don't want to need a man to take care of me. I'll just take care of myself. Because I always had, I never really had a man to take care of me. Um, I came from a family of all women. My mother was a single mom with four girls. So, um, And I left home at 15, got a job, went to school. I went to college at 15 at the university. Well, started it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. But, um, so, um, I just... I went to, uh, so I went back to school. I had to go to undergrad for four years to even get into med school, and I just totally killed it. I studied really hard, and um, 
and then I, I got into med school. I got into a lot of med schools. Um, I was one of the top students. I'm not bragging, but it's the truth. Um, I got, and so I accepted UCLA because it was close to home and I had good child care, which was my parents. Um, so, um, but I always, and one of the reasons I wanted to be a doctor was so I could afford to um, pay for recording studio, <laughs> which I never actually did. Um, I mean, I recorded before I went to to med school, but after that, I had two more kids and I was working all the time, and uh, and that never happened. Um, but then around in the in the nineties, I remember uh, we need we had a, we had bought a house, our first home, with all these walls, and I thought. I need to put some art on here. I went down to the art gallery, and art was so expensive. And I just looked at this. Um, I looked at an artist called Rothko, which is just colored squares. And I looked at that, and I said, oh, I can do that. I can paint colored squares. So I bought big canvases, uh, you know, go big or go home. I bought big canvases, and I started painting. And and I did paint for a long time. And I ended up filling up um, our imaging centers with um like over a hundred paintings that I did in one year. Um, you may have seen them before. I, I've done little clips in my stories. Um, one of these days I'll do a designated um, IG so you can look at it. And, and, and I did those paintings mostly uh, when I was going through my transition from young to old, which is called menopause, um, which actually lasts about five to seven years. But um, you don't really know that you're in it. You just feel anxious and um, sleep, you get problems sleeping and, um, and depression and, and just a lot of stuff arises. And, um, and there's, there was no, uh, guides or, or elders, um, to help, you know, walk you through this stuff. Um, so, <laughs> so where was I? Oh, oh, uh, so anyway, this woman, pearls and jelly or something like that. Um, she says, I recognize you as an, as an artist. And, and that's the reason that you're a target for bullies. And I never thought about that. I always wondered why I had a target on me. And, and for those of you who are, those of you who are saying, uh, don't be a victim, don't be a victim. Okay, I'm not a victim. Um, there's a difference between being a victim and being a target, okay? Um, you know, the deer that gets shot on the first day of hunting season is, uh, is a victim. <laughs> um or is he a target? I don't know. I guess he's a target because um, just standing around being a deer um, makes him a target. Uh, but if he gets shot, he's a victim. So um, I don't know what you guys mean by don't play the victim or I'm not playing anything. I'm just playing Dr. Deb. That's that's who I am in, in this life. Um, this is my performance. I, mean, I told you I was a theater and dance major and I figured there's nobody else that could play me but me. Uh, I am the best Dr. Deb, um, although if someone were to do a movie about my life, please, please make it Cameron Diaz. <laughs> you heard this. <laughs> and uh, back in the old days, people used to say I look like her. Not not these days with the hair. I, I look more like uh, Betsy Johnson. Please, I know. Okay, I'm not copying her. I didn't even really, I didn't even know she did this. This was my hairdresser's idea. Um and and because it's art and I love I love art and I am an artist and um, that was a transition when I got this hair was not knowing what what it was going to do or create for me and others. Um, I pretty much quit painting after I got the hair and, and started to be more creative in my dress because it was like it was as if I took the painting um, off the wall, my canvases and, and went, went for a walk. And it was so interactive and, and lovely and, and immersive and, and it and engenders a lot of conversations with people and and very kind people and sweet people and you know, I love your hair or, <clears throat> you know, whatever. It also engenders some mean people. You know, I had a man walk across the street on Balboa Island who saw me and then, you know, he walked all the way across the street to pass me so we could say and I saw him doing it. So I was on to him. I'm a doctor, so I, I notice things. Um, I have enhanced vision, uh, hearing, I listen. Um, that's what doctors are trained to do. So I saw this guy come across the street and so he could pass me, so he could say, hey, Halloween was two months ago. Um, and I said, because I was ready for him, I was like, really? That's all you got? 
that's all you got to say? I said, why don't you walk off the street, come back, and pass me and when you come up with something better. So, um, I'm on to you. Remember, there's a reason why in my IG profile it says badass. Um, I know I can't help it. It's the Mississippi rebel in me. I can't help it. I can't help being from Mississippi. You know, one quarter redneck. Good goddess almighty. Um, and the other three quarters is um, educated. Educate, <laughs> so, um, but one, one part of my family was farmers. Yep, they worked in the farm. They had chickens and cows and, uh, and raised vegetables and, and did all that and canned and snapped beans and, and they had a root cellar and it was a very strange place in Mississippi to go into the root cellar where it would be 100 degrees upstairs and 60 degrees downstairs. Um, but anyway, where was I? Some of my, some of my relatives on that side, like two generations back, like my great, great aunt, uh, she had a toilet out back of the house. <laughs> and I didn't like going over there. It made me nervous. So um, anyway, so if you're an artist, I was really, really pleased today um, that I felt seen and heard and understood by this woman. And it was so warm and it was like a huge hug that she saw me and uh and reached out to me to to hug me and and hug me by telling me that she saw me and she heard me and she understood me and I tell you that is because I work with addicts um and people with PTSD um, one of the main causes of addiction is isolation it's not the su it's not the substance because we all have a couple of drinks, but we don't all become alcoholics. Um, it's isolation. And, and isolation is created when you're in an environment where you are not being seen and you are not being heard. And a lot of those people are artists. They're creative souls um, where they want to do or try something new or different, something that, say, like a boy wants to do something and, and um, like wear, wear a dress. And um, and he is not allowed because that's wrong in his uh, in his environment. And um, for whatever reason, I mean, I don't know. Think of one reason why it's wrong, other than that maybe if you if you are concerned that your child might be laughed at, and and that that is a concern. Um, but if you're in a loving, kind, supportive environment, protected, then um, children should be allowed to to play and explore and adventure and do things um, without feeling guilty or shame. And and if they are given this space, then they're going to grow and evolve and be fabulous people. And and we tried to provide that one for my kids. And I think as you if you follow me and see my kids, they're um they're just so successful in life, successful, happy, um just amazing humans. And um so, and I think that's because we provided them with a place where they could fail, you know. They didn't get beat up if they didn't get an A or a B in a subject. They just got, oh, well, yeah, maybe you don't like that subject. Maybe that teacher's not the right one. Um, let's change schools. <laughs> if they were depressed or not having a good time or, some, you know, something was really seriously wrong, especially in, in you know, if you see things happening, like your, your, your child drawing inward, um, that's always a good sign that... A, f a signpost that they're not um, they're not living up to their potential and you could be part of the problem and the environment at school could be part of the problem the, um, if they're being bullied take them out of the environment I always took my kids out of environments where they weren't thriving and sometimes that meant homeschool and um, or boarding school or uh, something just a different kind of school um, homeschool with a private tutor. Uh, all the public schools have wonderful homeschooling now. And a lot of these, um, and, and a lot of the times when this happens is when they become, when they go through puberty, which is the exact opposite of menopause, you know, where you're getting these hormones and your body's changing and, and you're, and you're losing your childhood to become an adult. And, you know, on the other end, menopause, you're losing your youth to become a wise person or a wise elder, if you accept it. 
Um, and, and we don't discuss that with our, our teens, um, you know, the changes in their bodies. Um, and I think it's a really good thing to have rituals and ceremonies to help them to facilitate these changes so they don't get messed up in the head. So they don't, you know, anxiety and depression are at an all-time high, so suicide and addiction. So to, to offset these things, um, we need to make our children, and I invite all of us, to make them feel loved and understood and heard and seen. And the way to do this is to listen to them and let them feel comfortable and safe to be able to share something with you without being shamed um, and, and remember, you can take them out of any environment where they feel bullied or unsafe to give them comfort. That's our that's our job, and that's our duty. And uh, and so I think that this woman reaching out to me this morning to give me um, that comfort, it really felt good. Um, I don't feel isolated. Uh, Burning Man is a community of of creatives that gives you love that sees and hears and I mean I've had people come for the first time and just break down crying because sobbing because it's the first time they ever felt seen so uh and all of us have this you know we don't we don't have to be ooh, 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 right in the middle narrow so another thing I would like to invite all of us uh, and women and men is to not gossip about others um please um just keep it to yourself, even if you're thinking it. Um, I know that we women don't typically support each other. Um, it seems like there's some kind of competition when there isn't. There's enough of everything to go around, and and that competitiveness comes out. Like if, let's say, we're we um, we see a woman who's um, who's had plastic surgery or who's had her lips injected or um, or whatever, you know, who's wearing something that's appealing. And uh, and we say something to put her down, like, oh, well, she gets injections to make her lips look like that, or, you know, or she's had a boob job, or, um, oh, well, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be that this or that uh, if she wasn't married to that really rich guy. So let's just say, hey, yeah, she looks great. She wanted to do that, and, you know, it's up to her. So let's just support one another. Let's uh, Let's think of three things kind to say. And uh, and not gossip, and and especially uh, think of three th three kind things to say about yourself. Okay, not just others about you. What are you? Are you good? Are you loving? Are you kind? Are you compassionate? Do you volunteer and do good for others? Um, uh, there's and and also don't live your life, you know trying to please others. That's different. Um, I know we women especially are people pleasers. Um, but really, if you just do be kind, then uh, usually you will please. Okay? But anyway, I just want to say thank you to that woman that, that saw me this morning. She says, I'm just a work of art. And uh, when she was in art school, um, somebody was criticizing her work of art, saying that, you know, something that looked like she spilled a red, glass of red wine on her canvas. Um, and you know, people make fun of my hair. It looks like a rat's nest. Um, if I had a rat, I would not let him nest in my hair. Although I have found a bee, um, and I found it when I was showering, and it stung me. Damn. And I love the bees. Uh, but my hand hurt all throbbed for two nights. I couldn't sleep. So, um, anyway, I, I just want to uh, give you all hugs. Thank you for supporting me and protecting and seeing and seeing each other and hearing one another and being more compassionate. That's what compassion is. Just just see each other so that we uh, we join hands and hearts in this community. Um, we are a virtual community now. Let's support other women. Um, let's support other men. Let's support um, let's support um, our gender choices because it's. You know, sometimes we don't have a choice. We are who we are, and we want to be our authentic selves, and I just really want to invite all of us to love and support everyone. Okay? I love you. Namaste. Namaste. Go to court site, and if you're there, I'll see you there. Okay? Look for me. I'm, I'm wearing pink. <laughs> I love you.